So this video's topic is simple machines. We'll be discussing the definition of simple machines and also six types of simple machines. Now we'll be going through a general overview of the six types of simple machines. Let me write that down. Okay. Now when you hear the word machines, most probably something like this, an excavator or maybe a machine with lots of gears and cogs or maybe some complicated machine like this one or a circuit board comes to your mind. But what we're going to talk about today is simple stuff. These have no complex parts. Simple machines is the topic. And what are simple machines then? What are some examples? Well, a spanner, this is a simple machine, or maybe screws are simple machines. Even a pair of scissors is a simple machine. And even, you know, a knife is a simple machine. So let's, let's define what simple machines are. Simple machines are very basic devices. Okay. They help us work by changing one of these two things, or maybe both of these things. Let's look at what they are. They can either change the direction of force, yeah, or they can change the amount of force which is being applied. Okay, So either the direction of force is changed by this machine, or the amount of force is changed by the machine, and that really helps in achieving our task. We'll go through uh, examples of all of this. This may seem vague right now. We'll go through examples. Don't worry. It's really simple. Okay, uh, simple machines are categorized into six types, and the first type is the wheel and the axle. This is how it looks. These are the wheels, and the rod that joins the wheels, right? That is called the axle. Now, uh, this is very useful. You can see it in cars, you can see it in machines, trucks, you can see it in bicycles. You'll see the setup literally everywhere, and it is very useful. It's one of the early inventions made by humankind. Next, we've got the pulley. Pulleys are also similar to wheels and axles, but uh, they're a little different. Let's see how. So here is an example of a pulley. Now, I'm sure you've seen pulleys at wells. I'm sure you've uh, even maybe uh, drawn water from a well. Let, let me just show you. I'm sure you've seen a setup like this, where there's a rope moving on top of the pulley like this, right? And at one end, you have maybe a bucket. You have maybe a bucket, yes, that does not look like one, but that is your bucket, okay? And you're maybe pulling on this end so that the bucket rises up. Wait, did you see what I just did here? This simple machine changes the direction of force, right? The force was being applied in which direction? In the downward direction, right? And the force was translated or converted and applied in the upward direction on the bucket, right? That's the example of the direction of force being changed. And a pulley does that beautifully. That's pulleys. Now let's go to the uh, next category of simple machines, and that's levers. Now there are lots of different types of levers, and you will be studying this in great detail soon. Uh, but let's just look at a simple case. You have a rock here, okay? And you want to move it, so you start applying force like this on this contraption here. Now this may seem familiar to many of you. Uh, it, it You may have seen people using something like this. Now, the thing about levers is that there's one fixed point in a lever which doesn't move. And if you can spot it, just pause and take a moment to think which point in this entire setup does not move. I'm pretty sure you figured out that this hinge point does not move, and that hinge point is called the fulcrum. Now, the important point you want to note here is that all levers have one point which is fixed, and that's called the fulcrum. Let's take another simple example. Let's say you have a pair of scissors here and you're applying force in this direction. And uh, which point do you think would not move? Yes, I'm sure you got it correct. That central point where the screw lies, that is the hinge, the fulcrum. Hinge is one of the words and names and fulcrum is another name. And, and that point is the point that will not move, right? Let's take another example, tongs. This is also another simple lever, a simple machine, which is a lever. Let's say you have a particular object here that you're trying to grab with your tongs and you are applying force somewhere here and you are applying some force up there as well. And which point do you think doesn't move when you do all of this? Yes, you're right. The hinge point, that fulcrum, doesn't move. Okay, so the thing about levers, again, I'm repeating this, the thing about levers is that there's one point that does not move and that's called the fulcrum. Okay, let's go to the next category of simple machines. These are inclined planes. Now, this may seem like a very fancy word, but it's very, very straightforward. A sloping uh, plank or a sloping 
sheet of metal, anything that's, you know, a sloping flat piece is an inclined plane. Basically, a ramp is an inclined plane. Okay. Yes, it's just that simple. Okay. And uh, we've got screws. Yes, screws are simple machines as well, like we just discussed initially. I'm sure you guys know what screws are. We will look at it in more detail soon. Next, we've got wedges. Wedge is a wedge is basically a particular shape. Let me put it up on the screen. This basically is a wedge. It's a three-dimensional uh, triangle kind of thing that is stretched. Okay, and that basically is a wedge. Now, an example of a wedge is an axe. Now, you may be like, wait a minute, I don't see that kind of a shape here. But if you pause and look carefully, I'm pretty sure you'll spot where the wedge is in this axe. Yes, there it is. So that particular portion is where the wedge comes in handy. Okay, so a wedge can be used to cut wood and stuff like that. So in this video, we discuss about the six different types of simple machines. We'll go into details about each type in the videos that follow.